Hi, and welcome to Witra. Today, I'm really excited to introduce our Witra IoT out of the box network kit. So the idea behind this kit is to allow you to evaluate IoT for your business. You can use this as a development platform to build software applications on top of. You can use it uh, for a proof of concept. You can even deploy this out in the field. Um, all the equipment here is ruggedized, industrialized, IP67 sealed, for example. It's ready to deploy in the field. So let's explain what you get in the kit. First thing is the asset tag. You can see it's very small. Uh, this, is, uh, this rubber tail is part of the antenna system. Uh, it comes with a mounting cradle, so you can glue or screw or bolt that to uh, any kind of asset and attach it. The asset tag contains a sub gigahertz radio. This is where the Witra kit is a bit different to other IoT kits on the market. Most of them are based on Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, even ultra wideband. All those technologies are very high frequency. By using sub gigahertz, we get long signal range and good penetration of the signal through building structures. The sub gigahertz technology is running over a six low pan radio mesh network. This is an open standard. And we also use frequency hopping. So we have robustness against interference and we have a high data capacity because we're spreading our airtime across a large number of channels. That's the asset tag. Next is the mesh router. You can see that it's actually the same piece of hardware, but uh, the mesh router is running different firmware. The idea behind the mesh router is these are anchor points in the network. So you install them in fixed locations on a wall, on a pole, indoors, outdoors. And then you can grow the size of your network by spreading these. It, be, it can function as a multi-hop network. So you can have a very large coverage area uh, by installing these further and further away from the gateway. So speaking of the gateway, this device aggregates all the data from the network and funnels it up to the cloud. So the Witra Cloud Portal is where you visualize your data from your sensor tags. Uh, apart from the hardware here, there's some accessories and antenna for the gateway, uh, a, some Velcro bands to allow you to uh, mount the asset tags on other kinds of assets chargers for recharging batteries in the asset tags and powering the mesh routers, uh, USB cable to configure the gateway with, and then a reset plug for the tags, a magnet, we use that in registration, and a release key to allow us to remove the ceiling caps on the tags. What I want to show you here is a click-on module, which is not a part of the network kit, but it's available through Witra's distribution channels. This is the first of many such add-on sensors that we'll be producing in the future. This one here comes in two versions. The short version is self-contained and is powered from the internal battery in the tag. The longer body version is uh, set up to take external power through the micro USB connector. Now we're going to look at how we actually get this running online on the web portal. Okay, so first thing we need to do is make sure that our tags are charged. To do that, we need to remove the dust cover. Okay, so here we'll see how we can remove the dust covers. Uh, you should be using this tool, uh, otherwise you risk breaking these plastic arms on it. So just line up the teeth on the removal tool and just press down like that and the cover will pop off like that and then you can just remove it with your hand. And then we can charge the tags through the USB port. So I'm going to plug this in here to one of the chargers. Let that charge for about half an hour and uh, that should give it enough charge to complete the rest of the registration procedure. Uh, full charge would normally take you know, one hour plus. So it's very important that you make sure that the asset tags are actually charged before you do this setup procedure. The mesh router tags 
actually should be powered the whole time. Uh, they use considerably more power than the tags, so they actually should be powered the whole time. So I'm actually just going to, okay. Right, so they're powered, they can just sit there. Then uh, we need to look at the gateway. Uh, I'm going to remove the lid. There's two metal sliders that you push up. Now, if they are too stiff, you can take a screwdriver or a pair of pliers and uh, push that if it's hurting your fingers to remove those. So remove the two uh, sliders. They're marked right and left. And lift the lid. That could be stiff because there's a rubber seal here uh, to weatherproof it a bit. So you might need to use, there we go, give it a little bit of encouragement like so. Then we have the uh, gateway here. To connect the kit uh, to the portal, we recommend the use of an ethernet cable. So I'm going to show you how to plug that in here. After you've uh, mounted the ceiling grommet, we can just push the ethernet cable through like that and route it through to the ethernet jack there that's on the Raspberry Pi and click that into position and then screw up the cable gland like that. And we can give it 12 volts power. So we have the power supply uh, from, the, from the kit, which has a two pin plug. You see there's a keyed slot in the body here. Remove the cap and just rotate that until you can push it in. Then turn the locking tab and you'll see here we have the green LED indicating power good to the unit. And that will put your gateway online to the portal. The other end of the ethernet cable can either go to a standard ethernet switch or to a third party cellular modem, which you can buy online. Important to connect our antenna for our sub gigahertz network here now. Just do that firmly tight with your fingers. Don't use pliers or any tools. You can over tighten that and damage it. So just finger tight. Now we're uh, ready to go online and uh, make sure our devices are working. All right, so now we're going to update the firmware and software in the kit. Uh, we need to go into the document, uh, online document, uh, click update your system. And in there we have the project dashboard link. As you'll see, that will open up the portal screen, uh, log on screen. Uh, you can register with an email address and a password or do what I'm going to show you here. If you have an existing Google account, sign on with that into the portal. The first thing you will need to do is create an organization. This one's already here because somebody is testing a system, but you will have a blank organization list. So I'm going to add an organization. Uh, let's call that Witra. And you'll need to click on the add button there. Okay. Right. So we've successfully added the Witra organization. Uh, Underneath the organization, we need to add a project. You can uh, add multiple projects within one organization, but in a, the free subscription tier, which uh, we're going to update now, you only get uh, one project, but in a uh, subscription model, you are able to create multiple projects for different use cases, different customers. Uh, I need to create my project. Let's call that now we have our project if I go and click on that then now we have our dashboard we need to uh, add our network kit to the project now so if we click on add device it's asking us to put in a device token or a batch token the batch token is actually located inside the network kit box underneath the gateway. When you lift that out, you'll see a sticker and it's a good idea just to double check those before you click on add devices to project. That's a unique string. Uh, every device that's manufactured has its own unique batch token.
Okay, so now you see here we have the dashboard and it's being populated with the devices in the network kit. Uh, we need to go and trigger a manual update of the mesh routers and the tags. The gateway itself will go online and update its software remotely uh, and automatically. You don't need to worry about that. But we need to trigger manual update mode on the other devices in the network kit. So uh, let's do that. Select all and just deselect the gateway like that. Then click the update button. It will allow you to review the list of devices you've selected. And then there's some instructions there about entering the manual update mode on the devices using the magnet and the reset plug, the OTG adapter in the network kit. So let's start the manual update like that. Okay, so what we need to do now is actually go and physically trigger the manual update mode. So let's go and do that. So we take the magnet, it doesn't matter which way up you use it, place it approximately over the W symbol, take the reset plug, micro USB, insert that, leave it there for a second, and then just remove it. And now we can see that the LED is doing double blink, then that's indicating that it's in manual update mode. Okay, so the network devices have gone through their manual update process now. They're all updated. We can see here the status uh, in the portal. They are all showing a green status bar. Uh, the tags uh, which are plugged in on the USB cable are showing uh, charging status, charging of the battery. Uh, that process took uh, about 15, 16 minutes. Uh, that's what you can expect for a network kit with this many devices in it. So what I want to do now is go through some of the other tabs in the portal and explain some of the features of what's available here. If you go in and click on uh, this details tab for, uh, I've chosen a tag here, uh, this will show you the type of sensor data that's available and how you can configure the various options for that data, the delivery of that data into the portal. So the first thing to look at here is the posting interval. How often will the tag deliver sensor data into the network? The default is set to five minutes. You can change that. Uh, let's lower that down, for example, to one minute and save. Uh, you'll see there, you have to confirm that. Now, if I go in uh, and look at the actual data, you can see there's temperature here. That's an internal temperature on the tag, an internal temperature sensor. So if you change the environmental temperature by walking outside or put it in a refrigerator, it will take some time to equalize to that new temperature because the tag is sealed. Let's have a look at this metric here. We've got a metric called moving and stationary. Now one interesting thing here is if you go into the settings icon, uh, at the moment it's defaulted to interval based data and we change that from five minutes down to one minute. What we can do if we want to is to actually trigger event based data. That means that when an event happens the device will automatically and immediately post data into the network. The event, uh, we define it here in terms of uh, the amount of time moving before it posts uh, that data. So uh, let's say we want to uh, do something like 72 seconds. Okay, um, so you can have event-based data to trigger immediate posting of an event and the event is defined in each of these tabs here. So uh, movement uh, based data or uh, on the other hand stationary, how long has the device been stationary for? So then we end up with a, a usage figure, how much is the device being used as a percentage of time. Moving down we have the raw accelerometer data um, in three axes, X, Y and Z. Uh, so this will show you if the device is actually stationary, um, if it's tilted, if it's moving. Gyroscope, of course, is a dynamic device. It measures rotation. So uh, if the device is still, of course, it's going to produce zero on all the axes, as you can see there. 
magnetometer uh, is measuring the orientation of the device relative to the Earth's magnetic fields along north-south grid lines. So uh, you can use that to determine the magnetic orientation of the device. Okay, let's go have a look at some of the other tabs in the portal. Uh, one interesting one is this visualization tab here where you can overlay a floor plan and uh, let's show you how to do that very quickly. We go to add data, you can load in um, various supported uh, file formats uh, and overlay a floor plan here, stretch it to scale it properly on the map and then save the view and uh, then you need to go and drag your system devices, so the gateway and the mesh routers onto the map in a correct position. If you do that, then you will be able to position the tags relative to that infrastructure on the map. We won't go into those details here. Integrations, this allows you to export or push the sensor data that we've looked at out to a third party URL. So uh, one of your customers, you might want to do an integration into uh, a backend system they have. They might want to make a fancy uh, GUI dashboard uh, another kind of mapping system, whatever. So let's create the integration point. We use webhooks and you need to put in the URL that the data is going to be pushed to and just hit create. Other than that, uh, there's just a basic settings tab here which allows you to uh, delete the project if you wish to do so. That concludes uh, this brief overview of the Witra portal. Uh, I hope you enjoy using your network kit.